Hey everybody, it is Margaret Texas Gal Treasures and I'm here today with Brittany Von Boom Vintage to talk all about Bakelite. Say hello. Hello. Thank you thank for you. having me. Oh, thank you so much for coming. So I'm going to give a quick intro. Um, if you're new here, hello, welcome. My name is Margaret. I do lots of videos about thrifty and frugal living, jewelry, merch by Amazon, and things like that. And um, this month in, or actually it was last month in our jewelry lovers and sellers group, we were talking all about vintage plastics, including Bakelite. And I found Brittany online I, on her website, and I just thought I'd reach out and ask you to come over and talk about Bakelite. Thanks so much for inviting me. Um, I don't claim to be an expert or anything, but I've been collecting it for a while and um, it's fun for me. Um, I wanted to come mostly to talk about how to spot Bakelite in the wild and how to um, figure out what it is before you buy it without having to rub Simichrome or other chemicals on it. Um, because there's been so many instances where I found it in the wild and I'm like, is it or is it not? You know, sometimes it can be 50 cents, sometimes it can be 50 bucks, and I don't want to spend money on it if I'm not sure what I'm getting. So I want to just discuss some methods you can try when you find some goodies out there in the wild. Um, and then whenever you get home, test it and see. Uh, some of these methods you can use um, whenever you're buying online too, which can be kind of scary. I've done it a couple times, but mostly I like to hunt for it in the wild. Awesome. Yay. So before we jump in, why don't you tell everybody who you are, where, where they can find you if they're looking for you later, and things like that. Um, I'm a vintage fashion blogger at vavumvintage.net, and I'm all over so social media on Vavum Vintage, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, although not so much on Twitter. I'm just like all over the place. Um, I'm a mom of two. I'm a stay-at-home mom, and I'm from St. Charles, Missouri. It's a suburb of St. Louis. Excellent. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to screen share some of your, this is how I found you. So let me find the, um, where is it? Here it is. So when I came across your, this is your, your website. Where am I? I've lost my page down here somewhere. Okay, there it is. I just was like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. Yes, so, that, oh gosh, that one was from years ago. Still. It's a little bit since. <laughs> Well, yeah, but I just was looking through all your pictures, like, wow, these are drool worthy, so cool. Thank you. Thank you. So I've, yeah, and colors. Pardon? I love all the, the rainbow of colors and everything. Yeah. So, I, yeah, when I saw that, I was like, okay, okay, I had to, I had to come find you. So, I did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I wrote the blog post, How to Identify Bakelite, back in like 2002. Um, I, I discovered Bakelite through reading other vintage blogs, and I love those big, thick stacks of rainbows, the rainbow ba bangles and big earrings. Um, I've always been really attracted to tacky plastic jewelry. It's just my thing. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid, I wanted like the big bubbly plastic earrings and stuff. Um, so I love this stuff. Um, I love collecting Bakelite because it's... It's kind of um, a hidden surprise. Um, it, it looks like tacky plastic jewelry, but it's kind of special because they don't make it anymore. Um, each piece is unique. Some pieces are very rare and collectible. Um, so it's kind of fun whenever you're wearing it out and somebody notices and says, hey, nice Bakelite, because you're like, you know what it is. It's not just trash, you know, and I kind of like that um, because some people think it's just trash and you get it for a quarter or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I, I love Bakelite. It's a really fun thing, and I collect all kinds of vintage jewelry that's unique and kind of kitschy. So that's very cool. Yeah, I I did find one piece at um, Salvation Army of Bakelite, and I think I got it for their all their bracelets were three dollars and fifty cents. So it was pretty exciting wow, for me. That's a good find. <laughs> yeah, they because they don't always know. Obviously, they can't know everything, right? Working in the yeah, Store. those are my favorite finds. Um, a couple weeks ago, my husband and I went to an estate sale. My friend spotted this estate sale online, and they showed a picture of a big basket full of colorful bangles. And she's like, what do you think? You think it's fake light? I'm like, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. So we got there early. And um, we went, my husband has really good, really good fingers for rubbing. He's got callous <laughs> thumbs. So he's rubbing all these bangles and it was a big basket. And I, I was just casual, like, how much are the bangles? <laughs> and they're like, $2 each. And I was really excited. I thought I'm going to buy the whole basket. I'm going to split them up between me and my girlfriend. 
and we found two in there that were that were Bakelite. All the rest were not. So those are the kinds of things I'm going to talk about today. That way you don't end up buying a, a huge basket full of stuff that isn't what you think it is just because it's the right color or, you know, the right sound or whatever. Yeah. And I would have totally done that because I'm notorious for just saying, I'll just look at it when I get home. Let me buy the whole yeah, bunch of Exactly. I, I'd spend thousands of dollars that way just buying all kinds of stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's not always <laughs> good. This one is the one that we found. Uh, it's got a little carving on it, and it's kind of a pea green, uh, yellowy color. And then she got a green one that matches. Um, and I, I was really excited when I found Aww. it. Um, here's my, I showed you earlier, but here's some of my bangles in here. And I have a bunch laid out. Because um, earlier we were talking about um, one way you can test Bakelite is the sound it makes when you clack two of them together. Um, and it's something I've always tried whenever I find it. I'm like, well, does it sound? And usually I wear one so I can clack it up against and see, is that, is, does it make the right sound? Um, and I don't think that's a test that a lot of people try, but it's kind of fun to experiment with. I don't think it's necessarily reliable, but I thought, um, I have some laid out here and I can, sh I can show you some of the sounds. Yeah. Makes. I hope you guys can hear them okay. So all the ones that I'm going to try that are Bakelite are identical. They are, I bought them together. They are matching pairs. So here's one. Okay. There's another. These ones are green. And here's some octagons. So kind of make these two really you can hear, but the other ones you can't. Now these ones look like Bakelite, but they're not. And here's the sound they make. So you can hear, I'll do these together. Whoops. Those ones, uh, they sound more hollow. And the Bakelite ones, they're more of a high pitch noise. So I don't know if that's like the test I would use, but it's yeah. kind of to experiment with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that was one of the ones I was having trouble, I was trying to show the group the clacking sound and then I started wondering well I wonder and we talked a bit before like is it because they're thinner or they're thicker you know like yeah and I'll clack like here's a, a thin and a thick one together it's still kind of a high-pitched it's a very distinctive sound I mean once you've been collecting them for a while you can click them and be like yeah that's probably but I would definitely then try some more reliable methods yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so how did you get into um, collecting Bakelite um, I, I, uh, I first noticed Bakelite being worn by some of my favorite vintage bloggers and I was like, what is this? What, what makes this special? And I researched it a little more. There weren't a lot of articles online back then. I mean, there are the collector's books, although I didn't check any of those out. Um, but I found some beautiful pictures of all the fabulous, um, carved bracelets and carved, um, brooches and earrings and things. And I just just thought, oh, I love that. That's so cool. So unique. And, and again, they're not made anymore. So it's kind of a special thing. And um, I love antiquing. So after I found some methods of testing, I was like, well, let's go to the antique mall and see if I can actually find any. Because online, they were very expensive. And I just scoured through some, some of my favorite antique malls. Um, the uh, the booths are just loaded with ju just junk jewelry and it's like 50 cents or a dollar a piece and you got to really rummage and I love rummaging that's my favorite thing yeah so, um, my kids were very little and they're excellent antique shoppers and I would just give them Legos to play with in the stroller while I sat there rubbing and sniffing everything and, and <laughs> seeing what I could find and I, I found some things and and it's just become an obsession I go to flea markets antique malls uh, garage sales estate sales um, even some vintage shops and online and just um, just find what I can find and I really love the hidden gems that's my favorite ones that aren't marked as bake alike because I'm like oh, I found a treasure <laughs> yes exactly yeah. it's like finding this little hidden treasure yes I'm totally yeah. with you on that one absolutely okay so uh, what other th type of things do you collect like do you just like obviously you probably collect more than just bake alike but Yes, I collect, I'm a horrible hoarder of all kinds of old things. I collect everything. <laughs> um, I collect sewing patterns and vintage uh, craft magazines, vintage clothes, hats, jewelry. I'm, I collect everything. I, My house is very tiny or I would collect a lot more things. <laughs> I don't know if you saw, I had Sharon Pfeiffer on who also collects Bakelite because we were just doing all Bakelite. <laughs> but she, she's a writer. And also a collector as well. So she she was showing like jars of dice, like cool old dice, oh. and just 
Love them. Yeah, you'll have to go back and watch. And then her main character in her books is also kind of like that, a junker going through hoarding treasures, things, buttons, and <laughs> yeah. So very cool. I'm going to say hey in the chat because we've got some friends. We are live, everybody. So Hi. hello. <laughs> Um, Roman is there, and Darren, hi, John, and Crafty Reseller Rita, hi, Maggie Doodle's there, and Rose, uh, some more friends, and Jackie, and if you guys have questions in the chat, definitely drop them in, and we'll jump on them as I go along, yeah, okay, so, can you show us some of your favorite pieces, do you have some of them in front of you? It's so hard, I have so many, and it's so hard to choose, um, let's see, my very favorite piece ever. I found this last year on my birthday. My husband took me antiquing um, without the children because they were in school. So it was just <laughs> and um, I went to my favorite antique mall here in St. Charles. It's the St. Charles Antique Mall. I'll tell you guys, if you're ever here, go. It's great. Um, and they have a great booth full of just costume jewelry you can root through. Some of it's really good stuff. Some of it, maybe, I don't know. But it's really good prices. So I found this bangle. I don't know if you can see it, but um, it has little inclusions of gold in it. It's a gold oh. one. And um, some of my Instagram friends have several, and I was like, oh, they're so beautiful. <laughs> they're so expensive. I probably never get one. I think I got this one for a dollar. And I was oh, just wow. Over the moon excited. I love the clearish, um, transparent ones. I so what would that sell for? Like if the, if if you were going to sell it, not that you're going to sell it, but oh, I don't even know. Um, I've I've seen them on eBay go for a couple hundred dollars. Um, depending on the, especially like thicker ones or more. I mean, the gold ones are really really unique and really cool. So yeah. Um, I got this more apple juice one that day that I also love. Um, I just really like the juicy ones, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, these, um, they're very plain, but I, I just think that they're so cool. And, and I have fond memories of finding them that day. And I, I think that's my favorite part about my collection is the memories of finding each, each piece. Um, I found this one while I was out shopping with a girlfriend one day and, and she's very sweet and I don't get to see her very often. And I was really excited because it has these little plastic gems on them. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm no expert on Bakelite. I, I just like to wear it. So I asked some friends online. I was like, is this, uh, is this something they would have added on later? Or is this the way they came? And um, this guy on Facebook was like, oh, no, that's the way they came. And he had several. My, my little gems are a bit banged up. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. Um, but he had like three or four of them that were beautiful. And they have some with little brass doodads on them. And um, so that, that's a really cool piece that I also love. There's so many that I love. <laughs> yeah. See, I wouldn't have known that about the little, I thought, you know, I would have seen those and been like, eh, it's not make alike because of those little. No, I kind of thought that too, but I saw that, that color orange and I was like, well, I don't know, maybe it is. And I did the rub and sniff and sure enough, it was. And I was really excited about it. Yeah. I want, I want to share some, I want to share some stuff because Sharon sent me a box of goodies and I was going to open it on yes. Saturday. So maybe I'll run and grab them and show a couple pieces because she did send some, some pretty stuff. Okay, well, why don't you show, show something else, and I'll grab the box because it's right here behind me. Yes, yes. Um, I guess I'll show some of my carved ones. If, if some of you aren't familiar, with them, some of them have really beautiful carvings, really interesting shapes. Um, they come in, this one is kind of scalloped, and uh, this one is more of a hexagon shape. But here's a couple of other carved ones that I love. They're just so fruity and fun and bright and fun. This one actually has a little gold painting in the carving. Um, oh, yeah. and I was like, I've never really seen one like that before, but um, it tested positive, and I was pretty excited about it. Oh, let's see your goodies. Are you ready? Okay, yeah. I'm going to show some, but I'm, sa I'm saving some of it because I'm going to unbox all of it on um, Saturday. Yeah. But she sent me, she said, needs a hook. This is real Bakelite. I know. First here, so it's a necklace. Awesome. But it just needs a hook on this end, isn't it? Yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Awesome. So I've only had one Bakelite necklace so far. Yeah. So there's that, and then some. She said some of the stuff will be Bakelite, some of it's not. So I just have to figure it out. Awesome. That's even more fun. So there was another one. Hang on. I think this was one. But I, I really am getting to, to practice my sniff test. 
yeah on it so uh, now I can tell because before I was always having problems telling mm. if it's Bakelite or celluloid because the celluloid also has a distinctive odor but yeah. this one is but now I know because I know for sure this is Bakelite. I trained my children to rub and sniff they can tell yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then this is another one that I've got to figure out it's a, a crucifix looks like it it's beautiful so, I don't know is it rubbing sniff? Yeah, I'm rubbing and sniffing. <laughs> and then I wonder, is the smell still on my thumb? Is that what I'm smelling? Yeah, I think that sometimes too. Sometimes I'll rub it on my pants, um, especially if you're wearing jeans, you can get some good friction. Or I'll just try like different parts of the back of my hand or something. Yeah. So I'm smelling. <laughs> I'm smelling. Yeah. Okay, okay. Anyway, so I I'm going to share the rest of it on Saturday, but I wanted to, I was excited. I was like, this is really pretty. I know she sent me some of it to sell to raise money because we're – helping raise money for um, the flood stuff here, you know. But then she said I could keep some. <laughs> can, I, can I just buy it and then like yeah. money? So we'll see how that goes. I have, I'll go through it and, and figure it out. Yeah. So okay. Hard <laughs> yeah. Um, Denise says, hi, is your guest from Illinois? I would love to find some junking areas and junking friends in the area. No, um, I'm from the suburbs of St. Louis, so I'm not far from Illinois. And uh, sometimes I do cross over the river and go check out some thrift stores and antique malls over there. Very cool. Okay, so next question is, how can you tell if something might be Bakelite when you're out in the wild? Okay, let's do this, because this is what I came here to talk about. Um, so... One thing that I, well, the first thing I look for is seams, um, which is very obvious. Um, although some things like this white bangle, this is not Bakelite. It doesn't have seams. So you also got to think about the colors that Bakelite come in. I've never seen one in a bold white like this. Sometimes they come in uh, pale ivory colors or if they've been um, refinished. There's a lot of professional Bakelite refinishers now, which is way cool. They take the patina off so you can see the original colors. Oh, cool. Um, you might find some really unique colors like bright pinks, bright purples, but if you're hunting stuff that's been sitting around for a really long time, you're not going to see something like that. So keep an eye out for your colors and the seams. However, there's always exceptions to the rule. Um, here's an earring that does have a seam. Um, and you, here. I can feel between the green and the black, there's definitely a split there. Um, so if you find something like this, you'll want to do rub and sniff or other methods of testing to see. Um, uh, some bracelets are like this. They're laminated together. Um, and you and I talked a little bit about laminated pieces earlier. I have not come across a ton of laminated pieces, so I don't have a lot of experience in testing them, but I, um, testing them with things like the rub and sniff and the, the chemical methods. Um, I asked a couple of friends if they've come across laminated pieces and if they test, and they said, yeah, the ones that they've come across, you can do the rub and sniff or the Simicrom test, and they do test positive. But if any of your, um, if any of your viewers have come across some that don't test, please let us know in the comments because I'm curious to know about that myself. Um, so another way that I test, if you find a piece that is translucent like this, um, this one is not Bakelite. I brought some that aren't so we can see the difference between the two. Let me find one that is, one that you can see. Here we go. Here's a root beer one. Um, let's see. You'll notice here the, the lines kind of go up and down. They're not going to go all like swirly around. They're mostly going to go up and down. Here in this one that isn't, sorry guys, I hope you can see this. It's just kind of chunky and the swirls are all over the place. And you can even see that up and down um, lines in ones that aren't transparent. Oh. And you see that, that's like totally a dead giveaway for me. Um, <clears throat> of course, you're only going to see that in the marble pieces. And ones that aren't, sometimes if you look at them really close up, you can see, but this one doesn't have those lines. So you'll want to use another test on something like this that's solid. Um, I usually stick to the rub and sniff because it's I have a, a sniffer that works well for... Um, detecting the formaldehyde smell. If you don't, bring a friend along, bring your husband or a spouse, or I I bring my kids along and I'm like, what do you think, does it smell? And they're like, yeah, definitely, it smells terrible. So then I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you gotta use lots of different methods when testing Bakelite. I'm gonna share a picture from your from your blog. Um, here we go. Because this is the the apple juice ones. You were showing one one 
that was and one that wasn't? Yes. So let's see. So it says the, the, the colors are, wait, is that, the, am I reading the wrong one? I'm reading the wrong one. Oh, here we go. The surface one. Yeah. The one where, cause one of these was Bakelite and one of them wasn't. Yes. The bangle on top, that is Bakelite. The earring on the bottom is not. And you can tell because the earring is super, super shiny. They really have a sheen to them. Um, the, you know, cheap modern plastics um, are super, super shiny sometimes. So that's another good way to tell. If you find something that's just crazy glossy like that, do some other testing on it before you buy it if you can, because it might not be, the, be what you're looking for. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay. Do you have some more? Way. Yes. Yes. Um, if you find a carved piece, and again, this one I find um, sometimes runs rings true and sometimes not. If you find carved pieces, these, one of them is Bakelite and the other two are not. Mm. This one is Bakelite. These ones are not. A girlfriend sent me this one because she thought maybe it is. And if it is, you can have it or you can sell it or whatever. Um, but this way to tell if Bakelite, if it's the real deal is you should be able to see tooling marks in, um, in the Bakelite. And on ones that aren't Bakelite, you won't see tooling marks. Let me see if I what do you mean when you say tooling marks? Um, when they carve Bakelite, they use tools. And okay. so you should be able, like right here. I don't know if you can even see it. Um, check my blog, uh, the Identifying Bakelite, because I did some close-up photos of um, little marks so you can really see the details. It's really hard to see in the video. Sorry, guys. Um, but okay. If, if you look between the lines, you'll see tiny little little marks or little cracks along the, uh, from where they scrape the tools in there to carve out the Bakelite. Um, and a lot of carved looking bra bracelets that aren't Bakelite um, or other jewelry, you might not see tooling marks. And that's a good indication that it was molded. Um, these ones, however, are not Bakelite and they do have tooling marks. So really? yes, which I was really, really surprised. This one I bought at a flea market and I was really excited because I'm like, oh, that could be the thing. I see tooling marks, but it turned out not to be. Yes, right there. You can see that little chip in that yellow one. Hang on. I think. Let me yes. Go. Ah, I clicked the wrong button. Ah. <laughs> and you sent some, pic some other pictures too. Yes, yes. So like that little area. Yeah, look inside those little areas um, for scraping marks. Let me switch over to the picture because you sent a picture of a, I think it may be the same bracelet that, uh, let's see. Gosh, the pictures you sent were so good. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Where did it go? I can find it. Oh, this last one. Here we go. Yeah, right in there. So you see the little little chips. Yeah. And if you see little chips in there like that, it doesn't it doesn't devalue or hurt the piece or anything like that. It's just the nature of carving bakelite, I guess. But they've they, they've been faking it now. Yes. So that's something you got to really look out for because some of the fakes look really good, really convincing. <laughs> And I'm looking for tooling marks on the, this is one that Sharon, one of the ones that was in that, the hall that Sharon sent me. So I'm like, is this, does this count? I don't know. Anyway, I'll find out. Yes, <laughs> I'll, have find out. My, <laughs> I'll have to get my loop out. Okay. Where are the questions? Was that everything? Did I, did I cut you off? No. Oh, okay. Let's see. Oh, biohazard pickers jump. Uh, he snuck in. Oh, okay. Jackie in the in the in the chat has a question. Um, she said a woman on eBay told me my bracelets weren't bakelite because they were bright colored. Hmm. I don't know. I have some pretty pretty crazy bright colors. So I I don't know. I mean, again, if they're like bright purple. Um, although if it's refinished, it could totally be Bakelite. I know a girl that collects purple Bakelite that's been refinished and they're spectacular. Um, I had a piece, I'm not sure where it went, that was pink. Um, and whenever I first, oh, here's one. When I first got it, it's this kind of dull orangey peachy color. Um, but I decided to get kind of brave one day and see if I could, um, refinish a little bit of it and see what was underneath. And it was pretty, pretty cute pink color underneath. I don't know. I got a set of four of them, but I can't seem to find it. Um, so I don't, I don't think that's necessarily true. I mean, if you have like bright white, bright purple, um, bright blue, they're probably not Bakelite. Um, 
Bakelite comes in a lot of, uh, here, I'll show you. Um, I have a bunch sitting here. B beautiful bright oranges, um, butterscotch yellows. Um, although, this one I thought was Bakelite. I wanted it to be Bakelite so badly, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. Um, but this one is, and I bought these together on the same day, and they're both pretty spot on, the same same shade. Um, but Bakelite comes in so many colors. I don't I don't think that um, just make sure that it comes, it's the colors that they you typically see for patina Bakelites. Um, oh, another thing, since you mentioned eBay, I bought a bracelet off eBay once that I wanted to be Bakelite so bad because it was that blue, that really unique blue that I love is my favorite. And I got it and it was like lumpy. Like, <sighs> yeah. If, if you should be able to run your thumbnail across Bakelite and not feel any lumps and bumps. I mean, unless it's carved, obviously. Um, but this thing was, it was grainy and lumpy and it had kind of a milky white, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, kind of a milky white patina on it. Um, and I noticed one of the bumps I scraped with my thumbnail and it was white underneath. And I'm like, dude, that is not Bakelite. Luckily, I contacted the seller because he said, well, it tested positive with Simichrome, so it's got to be Bakelite, right? Well, um, that's why I, I try to use so many different methods. Not Don't just rely on Simichrome because I liken it to taking photos in a haunted house. You want to see a ghost, right? You want to you see something. So you rub it and you rub it with the Simichrome and hope it turns yellow. Sometimes it might be dirt. Sometimes it might have been from a heavy smoker's house. Sometimes it might be Bakelite, but you just never know. So don't rely on just one test, especially if you're selling. Luckily, the seller was kind and he's like, well, it tested positive. And I was like, well, I, I'm a collector and it's not. So can I return it? And he said, yes, he was very, very good to be. So it was oh, great. That's good. Um, yeah, don't buy any lumpy Bakelite on, on <laughs> online or in person. <laughs> well, well, this this happened too because as you know, I'm I'm obviously not an expert, but I was just learning and I was going through these buttons, and I was testing some, and they were I think they ended up being celluloid, but they were like creamy colored buttons. So yeah, it was like rubbing off yellow. I was getting all excited, and I was like, oh wait, yeah. it might just be because it's yellow. The no, I I want it to be so bad, and I know you guys do too, but um. <laughs> If it's if it turns out yellow, awesome. See if you can smell it. If a friend can smell it. If there's any other indications. If it's carved, look for marks. Those kinds of things. Um, I I want it all to be bakelite. I know how it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Now, this is something I've read. I read that black bakelite won't test positive with Simichrome. Oh. Um. I, I have some black Bakelite and I, I haven't had any problems with it. Um, some of my friends said if the patina, oh no, that was with the rub and sniff. Um, I had a problem with one black piece that would, didn't test positive with the rub and sniff. And they said sometimes it's just the patina is really heavy, I guess. And you got to keep rubbing, get friction on it to get the smell. Um, but yeah, um, I talked to some friends that have tested all of theirs with black, um, black Bakelite and they said they've never had a piece of black Bakelite not test positive, but I don't know, maybe some of them don't. Yeah. So I'm sure we'll have somebody yeah. comment. <laughs> yeah. Please comment, please. Um, because I'm curious to see about that too. Okay. And now somebody asked the question. Does MAS, M-A-S, M-A-A-S, work the same as Simicrum? I don't even know what, I guess it's a cleaner, like 409 maybe? I don't know. I don't even know what that is. Um, when you ask me that question, I'm, I'm like, I've never even heard of that before. Please, if any of your viewers know what that is and if it's safe to use and if it tests, let us know because it's another option to try. Yeah. Okay, and then we already talked about glazed ones and laminated pieces. Mm -hmm. And then, so outside of the common Bakelite characteristics, colors, blends, seams, um, are there other describable visual characteristics that you should look for to differentiate Bakelite from other plastics? Um, definitely, like we mentioned earlier, make sure it's not like super, super glossy. Although maybe some of those glazed pieces could be glossy, like we mentioned earlier, but I don't have a lot, I'm not very familiar with a lot of glazed pieces. Um, look for the, those tooling marks, look for um, the typical colors that you find Bakelite, and uh, the, those grain lines that we discussed earlier, for sure, will be a really good indication. Cool. And then the last one, I, I can't believe we've gone through all this so quickly. <laughs> I know, 
Wow. <laughs> okay. The, um, I once heard, this is a question from, from one of the groups. I once heard that cleaning a vintage Bakelite piece before chemical testing may impact the true result and give a false negative. Is that true? I don't believe so. Um, I guess it depends on how you clean it. Um, if you use abrasive chemicals to clean it, which I, I would not, um, it may, but I don't know because I, I think there's still going to be some patina left over unless you're sanding that thing or putting it on a buffing wheel. Um, I don't think it'll take off all the patina and the patina is really what, what you're looking for for this for uh, what turns it yellow. Um, to clean my Bakelite, I just, just soap and water, dry them, and be done with it. But I don't, I don't think it'll, it'll affect testing at all. No. Yeah. All right. So those are all the questions that I had. Do you have anything else you want to share? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. Does anybody else have any questions? Looking in the chat. Let's see. Denise is saying thanks for having the ladies on. Um, she's intrigued by Bakelite. And... Okay, Jackie wants to know, how do you tell whether Bakelite is from the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, etc.? I don't know about that. Um, I know there's, as far as uh, brooches go and earrings and things like that, some of those designs are very specific designs. Um, you can uh, check some of those Bakelite collector books and see when those specific, specific designs came out um, and which designers worked on those. Um, and some of the carving as well. Uh, would be indicative of a certain period. You can tell like if it's, I've seen some beautiful Bakelite dress clips that have very Art Deco designs on them. So obviously that wouldn't probably be from the 50s. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Do you have any books that, that you like? I have some that, that Sharon recommended I can tag in the description later, but do you have one that you like? Uh, no, um, but please tag yours because I would, I would love to check those out. Yeah, I will. Okay, well, I'm going to say thanks, everybody, for watching. And tell us again where we can find you if they're looking for you. Uh, my blog, it's a vintage fashion blog. It's vavoomvintage.net, and I'm all over social media under Vavoom Vintage. I have linked Brittany's, let's see, let me, let me see what I put down there. I put your blog, I did put your YouTube channel down there. <laughs> I just have hair tutorials. I haven't touched that in a long time, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I put your Pinterest. Well, it says your Pinterest, but it says .co.uk, so I don't know if somebody in the UK is following you. And I don't know. It, I'm sure it's all the same. <laughs> okay, cool. So I'll, I'll find your Instagram and link that down there too. And if you guys have any questions or more uh, to find out about Bakelite, leave a comment. And I'll yes, watch. share your knowledge with me too because I don't know everything and I would love to learn more. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. And y'all give, give Brittany a big thumbs up down there. And we'll talk. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.